Every generation has their own defining events and subcultures. Likewise, every generation has trouble relating to other generations, especially when relating to their parents' generation or their children's generation. It's a linguistic gap. The colloquialisms change enough that parents don't understand the words and usages of their children, and vice versa. Case in point, my kids have all asked me to explain the first time they heard me use the phrase vice versa around them because they'd never heard it elsewhere. I used to be pretty cool. I used to be fluent in current slang. I used to be an edgy humorist. Now, at least as far as my kids explain it, I'm a dad with dad jokes. I've been told that I'm as edgy as a sewer pipe and full of the same stuff. My fashion style is, and I quote, a cross between busy dad and aging hipster. I've watched them Google copacetic and listened to their polite reminders that I'm slowly dying, always delivered with a sarcastic grin and an almost audible click of their internal scoreboard as they act like they just dunked on me. For my part, I let them think that they have the upper hand for a bit, and then show them that the old man can crush their puny efforts with a single sentence. These are all loving, good-natured exchanges. I only tease those for whom I care, and I am mindful of my audience when I do begin to tease. I always make certain that they know that I love them more than life itself. Enough, in fact, to treat them like they are intelligent enough to speak to as adults, and to understand what I tell them. There are many, many examples of a different dynamic in society today. Boomer is supposed to be a descriptive, not an epithet. Ditto, Gen Xer, and Millennial. It's sad. When our society discusses issues politely with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. Generation Z, the youngest generation, begins somewhere between 1993 and 2005. I personally prefer 2000 as the dividing year. Every member of this generation is under the age of 20 if we use that year. And they are the first to live where the internet always existed. They're just now starting to come of age and in my family we have three members of this generation. We don't hear much talk about them yet because they are kids still for the most part. This is the generation over which Millennials, Gen Xers, and Boomers quarrel, each thinking that they know better how to raise the post-Millennial Zeds. Gen Y, the Millennial generation, begins somewhere between the mid-70s and mid-80s. Again, I have a personal preference for a start year, 1980. The Cold War ended during the early years of the Millennials, and many of them cannot remember a world in which we faced mutually assured destruction and the Soviet Union. Millennials tend to be the most progressive members of society, which to me means that they are convinced that their parents screwed up the world and it needs fixing. I can see their point, although their education and lack of experience tends to limit their understanding of current events to something less than they think they know, and they are very wrapped up in their feelings about issues instead of the facts of those issues. My oldest child is a millennial. Generation X, my own generation, begins where the boomers end because of serious disputation of the end date by demographers and because I believe in patterns I understand that my generation begins in 1960. We are the children of mass media, those who grew up knowing that the world might end every day and determined to enjoy our MTV. As we grew older and we celebrated both the end of the Cold War and the overwhelming victory in the Persian Gulf War, Gen Xers became convinced that the free world could overcome any problem if we just put our minds to it. A big part of the reason why we have so many issues upon which progressively minded millennials may latch is due to the solution of the really big problems which happen in our lifetime. We are the yuppie generation, more prone to seeking gainful employment and access to college educations. The baby boomer generation, our predecessors were born in the 40s and 50s. These are the children of the Cold War, the ones who brought about the end of the Soviet Union, the ones who became hippies, the last generation to generally see the value in taking a trade instead of a college degree before they were married with children. Boomers are the generation of equal rights and multiculturalism. 
They are also largely retired now and more of them are passing away every day. Before them, the silent generation of the 20s and 30s still lingers. These are the people who came of age during World War II and the beginnings of the Cold War. They are the very image of the silent majority, people who hold strong beliefs, yet quietly go on about their lives without need for accolades. And yet, they also supplied the leaders of the Civil Rights Movement and much of the manpower used during World War II to defend the free world. Few are left of this generation, and almost none of the greatest generation, those born after 1900 but before Prohibition, the survivors of the Great Depression and the leaders during World War II. The cultural war which is currently waging across the media is between Gen Xers and Millennials for the souls of the Zeds. Strangely enough, Boomer has become an insult used by Millennials to silence Gen Xers. The reality is that most Boomers are retired, or about to be retired, and while opinionated are increasingly sidelined in the debate. Boomers are being scapegoated for the actions of a few elderly elected officials who remember that they are activists, but not how to be good activists or what their activism is supposed to achieve. No, the real battles are fought between my generation and the generation born after mine. As I said, millennials want to solve problems and believe themselves better equipped to do so. Gen Xers look at what millennials do to solve problems which, to us at least, they invented, and shake our heads. Gen Xers, on the other hand, largely want to stop the steady decline of functional society and believe that we have to educate millennials and Zeds to do this. Millennials look at what we do and see not people trying to solve problems, but people actively making them worse. They believe that boomers and Gen Xers need to stand aside, shut up, and listen to their much better educated, much more aware successors. Meanwhile, the Zed children of the Gen Xers are trending toward a middle ground, believing that millennials have the right idea but take things way too far. The Zed children of millennials trend towards the same belief that millennials have the right idea but instead think that they haven't taken things far enough. Because of this, we have kids running around that can't figure out which of two genders is their gender, so they invent new genders to describe their non-binary, undecided point of view. We have an intersectional model which creates and sustains a hierarchy of victimhood. We have people firmly convinced that the world is full of people just like them. And that if we just try to understand them and accept the differences between us in a multicultural approach, then we can make the world a much better place. Anyone saying anything different than this is spouting hate speech and is likely a far-right ethnostatist incel. Hashtag sarcasm. Meanwhile, we have other people who have shot straight past conservatism to the extreme right. Some believe that the Holocaust never happened, that no one has ever landed on the moon, that the world is actually flat, and even that women should have no agency at all in determining their lives until after they have given birth and raised a half a dozen kids, and even then, that agency should be subordinate to the long ignored needs of men. My response? Um, no. Just, no. 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 I stand here in the middle of this never-ending storm of wrathfully shouted ignorance and wonder just how many people have forgotten how to listen entirely. I read social media posts which espouse positions so narrow-minded that their creators must be able to look through a keyhole with both eyes at once. And so, woke that they involve no critical thought at all. The legacy media outlets churn out puff pieces, activist hullabaloo, and factually inaccurate wikiganda agitprop by the bushel basket every hour of every day until I don't want to watch the news on the mainstream outlets at all. Antifa has arrived in America, and America doesn't seem to be hauling their fuzzy butts off to jail to face charges for the widespread destruction and personal harm which they cause when they peacefully demonstrate with bike locks and other improvised weapons. And more people are showing up to political rallies armed with loaded firearms. Many are shouting, and none of them is listening to each other, and I'd like to throw a bucket of cold water into each and every face, even if it lowered mean scene level by a dozen feet to fill the buckets. Shut up, the lot of you. Just shut up and listen for once. 
Try to understand what the other side is saying, and if that's too difficult for you, then try to understand that the people whom you think to be your enemies used to be your friends, your family, your fellow citizens. Admit that you might just have some things wrong and open yourself to rational discussions. This might take a while though, so for a start, try apologizing for not listening and thinking in the first place. Sorry about that. I hate it when I lose my temper. Now that's just my opinion, and you don't have to agree with me. In fact, I'd love to hear what you think, so go ahead and give me a like or dislike and comment below. If you like this content and want to see more, feel free to subscribe and make sure that you ring the notification bell. New episodes of Roasted Opinions post on Wednesdays at 8pm and Saturdays at noon Central Time. Join me on the last Saturday of every month for my live stream with a special guest who joins me in the kitchen. New content is coming, so watch this space.